the U.S. is considering going even farther with AI trade restrictions and prohibiting China from accessing foundation models. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. Today, we are once again looking at the geopolitics of AI. And this is more than just some wonky topic for people who are inside the Washington, D.C. beltway. The reason that this matters, even if you are just a user of AI tools, is that one of the big considerations shaping the way that U.S. policy towards artificial intelligence gets made is the nature of our relationship with China. What happens vis-a-vis -vis that relationship could impact what tools you have access to just a year or two down the line. And that, I think, is the context for a new reporting from The Atlantic that in addition to AI chip restrictions, the Biden administration is also considering how they might prohibit access to more advanced AI models as well. In a piece called The New AI Panic, The Atlantic writes, For decades, the Department of Commerce has maintained a little-known list of technologies that, on the grounds of national security, are prohibited from being sold freely to foreign countries. Any company that wants to sell such a technology overseas must apply for permission, giving the department oversight and control over what is being exported and to whom. The battle lines may soon extend beyond chips. Commerce is considering a new blockade on a broad category of general-purpose AI programs, not just physical parts according to people familiar with the matter. Although much remains to be seen about how the controls would roll out, and indeed whether they will ultimately roll out at all, experts described alarming stakes. If enacted, the limits could generate more friction with China while weakening the foundations of AI innovation in the U.S. Now from there, the piece describes how, while the AI chip export restriction might be focused on a concern that AI is going to be used to develop advanced autonomous military systems in China, there is a growing second consideration now of how access to frontier models from companies like Anthropic and OpenAI could benefit China in other more nebulous ways. The piece discusses how a number of influential white papers have helped shape Washington's thinking in this area and is driving it closer and closer to a model of regulation and export restriction that, while potentially denying China access, also creates fairly severe regulatory capture for the organizations at the top of the food chain, writes The Atlantic. The obsession with frontier models has now collided with mounting panic about China, fully intertwining ideas for the model's regulations with national security concerns. Over the past few months, members of commerce have met with experts to hash out what controlling frontier models could look like and whether it would be feasible to keep them out of reach of Beijing. I think really importantly, the piece identifies what they call a, quote, precarious dynamic playing out in Washington. Basically, they point out that the AI panic has made policymakers, quote, uniquely receptive to the tech industry's messaging. Combined with concerns about China and the upcoming election, it's engendering new and confused policy thinking about how exactly to frame and address the AI regulatory problem. Said Emily Weinstein, a research fellow at Georgetown Center for Security and Emerging Technology, parts of the administration are grasping onto whatever they can because they want to do something. So one important aspect of this piece is how they identify the specific dynamics in Washington that are leading the leading edge of the AI tech industry to be in sync with policymakers, potentially at the expense of smaller companies. A second thing articulated in the piece is the likelihood that expanding restrictions beyond just chips would further exacerbate tensions with China. However, there's a third piece, which if you listen to this show regularly, you will know is a growing topic of conversation. As Matt Shaheen, a Carnegie Endowment for International Peace fellow, put it, if the export controls are broadly defined to include open source, that would touch on a third rail issue. In a really important section, The Atlantic writes, what's frequently left out of considerations as well is how much this collaboration happens across borders in ways that strengthen rather than detract from American AI leadership. As the two countries that produce the most AI researchers and research in the world, the US and China are each other's number one collaborator in the technologies department. They have riffed off each other's work to advance the field in a wide array of applications far faster than either one would alone. Part of the reason that I think it's important to share this is that it's one of the first times I've seen in mainstream media a counterweight to just either the A, full AI safety concern narrative that is getting more and more play, and B, frames the question of open source in terms of value to Americans, not just cost, and proliferation towards China. Now, of course, the piece also recognizes that the feasibility of export controls of frontier models could be really, really challenging. Now, putting a fine point on this difficulty is another article, this time from Bloomberg, from about a week and a half ago, where U.S. Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo showed just how challenging the AI chip export bans really are. At a Senate Commerce Committee hearing, Raimondo basically pointed out that Chinese companies are continuing to advance in their own chips, a development which she calls, quote, incredibly disturbing, and which she suggested means that her department needed more ways to enforce the administration's export controls. Now, among other things, she's asking for expanded authority over technology transactions, which is, I think, exemplary of how this type of issue can lead pretty cleanly to an expansion of government power. Now, just today, we also got news from Reuters that the current administration is continuing to expand its thinking about how it blocks China getting access to AI chips. 
Basically, they're trying to close loopholes through which Chinese companies can get access to chips through partners in other international locations. Writes Reuters, in the initial round of curbs, the Biden administration left overseas subsidiaries of Chinese companies with unfettered access to the same semiconductors, meaning they could easily be smuggled into China or accessed remotely by China-based users. So now they're basically trying to figure out how they can close that loophole. Now, this follows news last month that the U.S. had also been dealing directly with companies like NVIDIA to restrict chip sales to parts of the Middle East. That wasn't about a concern that Saudi Arabia would have access to advanced compute, but that those chips would ultimately end up back in the Chinese sphere of influence. What's clear is that the White House is coming closer to announcing some AI policies. Politico also reported today that the White House executive order on AI is getting closer than ever and started to give a few details of what that might include. For example, the White House is expected to introduce guidelines for testing and evaluating AI systems, which could of course be part and parcel of a regime through which certain types of models are not allowed to be used or sold to Chinese companies. And the order is also expected to require cloud computing companies to track their customers who they think are likely to be developing AI systems. That executive order is expected to come out before the end of the month. So what we've got now, just to sum up, is a United States that is thinking aggressively about China as it creates AI policy in ways which may tip the scales towards the incumbents, or at least the startup market leaders, as opposed to new companies, and which may place serious restrictions on things like open source AI development. And of course, all the while, you have China proceeding ahead as fast as it can as well. This may be less interesting than new features and ChatGPT4 vision, but it's going to have an extraordinary impact on the shape of the field in the years to come. And so I hope this gave you a little bit more of a sense of where we are and what's coming down the pipeline. I appreciate you guys listening as always. And until next time, peace.